for joining in and uh, thanks Sherry for the introduction. And it is Steve Nissen's candle, candlecharts.com. And this is all about confident trading with Steve Nissen's candle patterns. Uh, when I learned this, uh, it was many moons ago, it was basically the eye opener that I needed. You know, it, it's changed all of the way I trade. And of course, my success has gone up significantly and I don't work near so hard. Let's see, there we go. Risk disclosure, we always need to give you a little bit of a risk disclosure. So again, just keep this in mind. Um, I'm sure everybody has a very similar one, but again, candlecharts.com forward slash disclosure is where we keep ours housed. And this talks about the risk of trading any type of security, even the cryptos, the futures, options, everything. There is a risk associated with it. But again, as long as you understand the risks, hopefully then you can also mitigate the risks. And that's the most important thing. Okie dokie, and there's me. Yeah, that picture fairly recent, you know, that was down in London. Uh, so for me, it's early afternoon. And so a big welcome to those who've just gotten out of bed and you're joining us here. Uh, and as Sherry said, you know, I've been trading, trading the stocks in different markets actually for over 37 years, including bonds, silver, and I've really taken it right into gold and, and the indices. Uh, so I'm into the futures now and uh, into the cryptocurrencies. There's no reason why I wouldn't trade it all. It's just a matter of uh, which market do I want to trade at any one time. And we're going to go through some of those coming up here now. So what I'm going to talk about today is effective use of candles. And I really want to emphasize certain words, effective. There's no point learning all these candle patterns uh, if you're not going to use them properly and efficiently, but because they have an efficiency already built into them. Uh, so, so we've got proper candle construction and their usage, how to avoid misusing candles. And a lot of people actually, I've seen people um, who were quite senior teach the wrong material. And uh, to be honest, it was dangerous what they were teaching. So uh, we, want, we, want to, we want everyone to understand how, how not to use the candles. And of course, how best to combine with a Western technical. Whatever your favorite Western technical is, and that's all right, candle patterns and candlestick charts, they're going to show you the direction of a, maybe it's a good buy or maybe it's a, a higher risk trade. So high risk versus high probability, completely different story. Uh, and of course, why not maximize your candle knowledge to apply to any market at any time frame? And yes, I have traded down as low as one minute charts and even down on the tick charts. I love it. Uh, I love what I do. I've, I mean, I've really put the system through uh, through the entire gear shift there. I mean, I, I really worked it hard to try and find faults and it's all about having a good strategy. And then, of course, using the candle charts and the candle patterns to your benefit. So here we go. It doesn't matter whether you're going to trade stocks. As I say, I've done. I do options extensively. I do a lot of options trading. Uh, and I do trade options on ETFs as well. There you go, CFDs. I've traded that. I've traded Forex. Futures, I'm into that now. I've been doing that for over two years. And, of course, cryptocurrencies. And there's no reason why the candle patterns do not work in the cryptocurrencies. But, again, there's two parts to this. Again, candle charts and candle patterns is a tool. And, again, you need to have a little bit of Western technical built into your trading strategy in order to uh, develop a successful strategy. And so it doesn't matter which market you're in. doesn't matter the time frame. And there we go, right onto our time frames here. And I love this because this this little globe picture map here, I mean, this tells the entire story, doesn't it? It doesn't matter what country you're in, doesn't matter what country you're from, and it doesn't matter what um, countries' markets you're trading. I mean, you could be in Japan and you could be trading in the Chinese market or the British market, or we got Pakistan there. I mean, all around the world, candle patterns are going to work in every market. You do need reasonable volume, uh, but nonetheless, it works. Now, we always have situations, and uh, hopefully this helps people understand and appreciate the power of what we're talking about here. You know, we've got a Tokyo clock. There's already 10 p.m. There's Moscow at 4 p.m. There's Turkey, Germany, London, New York at 9 a.m. So, and again, it doesn't matter where you are around the world. You could trade any one of these markets from any one country. It, as I say, it's just absolutely magical. So the most important thing, we need to understand the construction of the candlestick line. In fact, I, I had a session this morning with some friends and we were talking about uh, 
well, stock trading, cryptocurrencies, in fact, and they were saying, yeah, but I don't understand what a candle is. Well, here you go. I mean, this is, I'm going to say it's simple. Once you understand this, it makes all the world a difference. So we sort of start here. We've got, we've got we, different, you can put on a different color. You can have any color candle you want. This is a white one. So we've got the open, where the candle has opened, where the market has opened for whatever your time frame is. The market obviously pushed down a bit lower because, again, that's showing the low trade of this period. And then we pushed up. This is where we closed for the day, but before we closed, we did push a little bit higher and then we pulled back a little bit. So you get your high, close, open, low. It's as simple as all that, isn't it? The real body. This is forceful and this is powerful all within its own right. You need to understand the bodies, which is going to be the filled in portion or or maybe it's the hollow portion. In this case, it's white. Um, there we go. We've got a black one to indicate the market is going down because, again, we opened up and closed down. On the white one, we opened at the bottom and closed up. So, again, this was a bullish market. This was a bearish market. Uh, upper shadow, and this, that's just called shadow. Again, it's not too technical. But we do want to understand and we want to appreciate how much shadow is on each candle. And, again, candles, what's your time frame? So, there we go. High, low. Eh, and our friend, the doji. You know, I... I never used to really like them, and now they've really become a very good friend. Now it's good. And again, Steve talks about this all the time, incessantly, candles in context, candles in context. And you could probably say it a third time, but what does that mean? Well, where do the dojis happen? And of course, we've got three different dojis in here. So again, like we've got this one here, right? The first one, it pretty much equidistance, upper and lower shadow, and we're right in the middle. We opened and we closed at exactly the same point. A little bit of volatility throughout that time period, uh, but the market was quite balanced. And at the end of the day, again, we came right back into the center line and said, well, we're not sure where we're going to go next. This is a candle of uncertainty, uncertainty. This one here, and again, this one's going to show you, I think, a little bit more information as well, because again, we opened low and we closed low, but during this period, we blasted up and then we pulled all the way back down. So this tells me there was a lot of euphoria in the market. We were very bullish at one point, And then all of a sudden we pulled all the way back down and people were selling, 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 selling. They wanted to get out. This isn't going to be a bullish signal, but it is still the doji nonetheless, because again, we open and close at exactly the same point. And contrary to this one here, we've got this one here, the, the final one, the third one here, pretty much the same thing. Again, we opened near the top, we pushed way down, but the bulls came in and pushed everything back up. At least it's telling me some psychology of what's going on uh, with this market and with this particular trade. Oh, there we go. Just change the color of the body. So some people have it green. Some people have a, a white body for showing that the market's going in the up direction. I've even got one chart and it's colored blue. Red, I usually use, well, either red or black on the downside. Again, it's a nice clean, you want to have clean, clear colors and it's okay. You can have any color you want as long as you understand and appreciate that the green or the black or the white that we had here was going up. That means the market's going up and up, up, up. And the red means it's going down. And, and it doesn't mean, okay, you can have a green one here and you can even have a market that's opened higher and still closed down. And again, that would be a red candle because again, you, it's based upon where the market has opened. In this case, it opened higher, closed lower. That's a red candle. Now, relative to this day here, had it been up higher, it could still be red. So again, the market's going to give you these secrets. It's going to tell you, well, you know, basically what the big players are thinking and partially what their psychology is. Let's go through some good stuff here. So a daily candle, I want to show you again, a white, a white bodied candle. Uh, as I say, that's fairly standard across the, the industry. And uh, well, let's see what it looks like when you've got hourly candles to make up that. And there you go. So we opened, we opened and went down a little bit. Now we've pushed up. And again, we jiggled around. We got a little bit of a small spinning top. And then we start to get more strength. Look at that, the strength coming back into the market. And we push up and we finish with a little bit of a black candle. I don't know if anybody thinks that's good, bad. Um, it just is. This is So again, this could be any time period here. And you're going to have a number of other candles making up this one big candle. In this case, it's a daily, and these are all the hourly candles. So what I see on this actually is that we opened up down heat, well, we opened on the top of the black candle, and we went sideways a little bit, some good support from an hourly basis, and then the bulls started to come in. Yeah, we had a little bit of bearish energy here, but for the most part, the bulls were coming in and pushing us up. Your daily candle looks very strong, and it looks very handsome. 
So I'm very impressed with how this, this setup looks. Let's get into some of the good stuff. And again, I've saved you some good old charts uh, so that we can go through and have a bit of a good discussion and have a look at uh, something that's real. And again, this is how I trade uh, all my markets. You know, I'm showing you the good stuff. And what do we got? Well, right now we've got ADI and it's a weekly chart. I don't know why that might sound crazy that I, that I might want to trade weekly charts, but no, there's a lot of great opportunity here. So what do you see in the market? So we got a couple of Western technicals here. Well, we got the 200 period moving average. We actually have a 20 period moving average as well, the red line. And I just put in a support line. Again, there's your Western technicals. We got stochastics at the bottom as well. What do we want to look for? Well, first things first, we've got a bull sash. Candles are going to help you identify turns in the market. So at this point, again, we were going sideways. We've got a bull sash. We're closing back above the 20 period moving average. And we did carry on in the up direction. Let's take a look at the next one. We had another bull sash over here. Oh, we had one here, but we had one here as well. Stochastics were uh, starting to turn back up. And again, we pushed in the up direction. Uh, so again, another big thing that we want to look for is the size and force. And we're going to come into that shortly here uh, to see when maybe an exit would be. So, so far, we're, we're going to focus a little bit on the entries. And there we go, another bull sash here. Now, why would I not take this position? A couple of reasons. Again, good force in that candle. Hit not only the support line that we had here, we hit the 200 period moving average. Um, well, we got the 20 period moving average just above us. So yes, we went up, but we pulled back. Better entry here with the nice bullish engulfing, because again, we also broke through the 20 period moving average. And again, this is part of one, this is one of my strategies, a breakthrough the moving average. And you can use multiple moving averages, it's okay. And there we go. So yeah, there was that bullish engulfing. Now again, something else. Again, when we talk about Western technicals, see we had good resistance here, and there was some bit of junk consolidation in here. But look, you draw that line across. Look where we came back to. So this bull sash in this case, I'm going to say, really is complementing this resistance area, which change of polarity became the next support. Bull sash coming off of a decent support area. I would take that trade. Wouldn't even wait to get above the moving average. I'm happy with that. I'm taking the trade. Okay, now we're going to look at ADI again, but literally we're, we're just going to drive in and take a look on a daily chart. And um, well, what do we got here? We, you know, we've got all the same information. But it's just that uh, there's a lot more of it. So again, this was the lower point here. Remember, we came up and then we had a retest. We didn't quite get to the lower point, but we had good support down here. So again testing a support area we had, again nice bull sash right there forceful candle came up to the 20 period we had a pullback and uh, our ceo paul and steve i think they love this opportunity and idea as well you see a nice forceful bullish candle could be a hammer in this case i've got a nice bull sash here yeah we went up and we came back a few periods later and we retested the low of this area here so sherry if you don't mind i'm going to throw on a little bit of a line here i'm going to say we could have we could have entered right here. Stop loss still would have been the lower shadow down here. That's what that's what we're talking about in our express class. Where's your stop loss? So we could put a stop loss right there. Uh, target is going to be minimum. I'm going to say minimum up here. But look at how we came back. We retested this area. In fact, I would have could have and would have entered on that red candle, even though it's red. Still would have looked to go long on that candle because again my stop loss was so close. You've got a very minimal loss or potential loss and sure enough immediately we turned around and we started going in the up direction it is very powerful again it's all about your strategy and you combine the candles and candle charts and the candle patterns and everything works very very well okay let's move on to candles and the candle patterns use candles to your advantage and it is a tool it is not a system you don't want to trade candles just by themselves they don't work that way. You do need to have a Western technical and it is just one of the tools that allows you to then click the button and say, yes, now I want to enter or now I don't want to. Use your favorite Western technical, whatever your favorite Western technical is, that's what you wanna use. Support and resistance areas, they are going to be, I'm gonna say super key. I cannot reemphasize that enough support, especially horizontal support and resistance. Uh, they're the most masterful parts of trading. Candle patterns, of course, they're great for calling market turns. And as you saw from some of the charts I showed you already, uh, and you're gonna see it again, 
you can also use it with momentum trades. As the market's going up, yeah, it'll have a little pullback into some potential support areas like your moving average. And then you'll see, hopefully, a nice green turning pattern that indicates good strength coming back into the market. I use that all the time. And that's for a momentum trade even. But it's just to continually add, and then I take off some position, and then I add more. It's great. Uh, so again, Steve, he brought candles to the West in the 1980s, uh, and he's you know basically delivered the candle patterns that you actually need to know. There are 28 real candle patterns that the Japanese have confirmed, and he co corroborated all this information with multiple Japanese traders. And so they, they they had agreed, the Japanese had agreed. There's a, there's 28 real patterns. Out of those, I use. As a, as a general rule, probably about 12 to 16, but there are 28 real patterns. You can make up a pattern for anything you'd like, but um, these are the real ones that the Japanese had really agreed that had the most power. And there we go. Candles, candle patterns, they are a trading tool. So here we are, we had, we've had a couple of raves. Yeah, we've had a lot of raves. We had a lot of people write in with some very complimentary things. And, and uh, here was something from Jim and he said, the best investment he ever made, the return on his investment in just a couple of months has now more than quadrupled what he paid for a lifetime membership. So he bought a particular program. Can't wait to continue to learn how to make even more. And again, this is all about your strategy. How do you want to apply the candles? But they work in every time frame. They work with every strategy. This is, this, is, this is one of my more favorite charts here, actually the one of the pictures that we use often. Again, um, using candles correctly. So again, the, you're gonna see some green arrows here. It says, well, who's in charge? Bum, bum, bum. Well, okay, I'm gonna say obviously it's the bulls. We've got all these white candles, we're going up. Look at the force on the candles. It's fantastic. And now we get a spinning top or maybe even a doji. And we're saying, well, well who's in charge right here? Well, I'm going to tell you that the bulls have run out of steam. They've lost control of the market, but it doesn't mean the market's going down. It's not necessarily a sell signal, especially if you sort of connect the dots between all the lows of the market. We're making higher lows. Uh, well, we're still closing above the lows of that nice rising trend line. Even the next candle isn't pushing down. It's not confirming that much negativity just yet. And then it started to turn down. So again, depending on your trading strategy, you may have taken some profits at that doji, or you may have changed your stop loss. Candle patterns are gonna tell you what you should be doing next quite often. And here we go. Is it a valid Nissan candle? Well, we got a hammer here. So I'm telling you, this is coming from our software. This is the, the Nissan candle scanner. You can, you can get this installed for your charts. Uh, and sure enough, we can see it's a hammer uh, right down at the bottom. Um, Pretty good, and again, we've got we've got the I say relatively small body. It's a white candle. This is a strict definition of a hammer, and the lower shadow is more than two times the length of the body, and very very little upper shadow. That's a hammer. Great candle pattern, and I love it. But it must come in at a great opportune time. So that is a hammer, yes. But now we've got a couple of more, and this is why we say you know again you've got to understand the whole makeup of the candles. And Steve spent a lot of money and time developing this and making sure that the Japanese had fed him enough information that he could publish about this. So in this case, we had the market was in an uptrend. Well, this can't be a hammer. Hammers only come from when we've been in a downtrend. Then we get a hammer and it's sort of like the snap back up and we came back up. See, and then we made a high here and we rolled over sideways. Well, again, that's not necessarily, and it's not really a powerful candle, not a bullish candle because it's come at the high. So in fact, it's more negative than bullish. So we wanna be careful on the candle patterns that we do use. And here we go. So actually we've got SDS here. So this is actually um, a short ETF. Um, so when the, when the market goes down, this one goes up. And when, well, this one goes down, the other market that it relates to is going up, the daily chart here. And there's a couple of interesting things that I wanted to show you in here, because again, the, can the power of the candles is phenomenal. There we go. See that nice green arrow? We've got a nice bullish engulfing. They've got a little E underneath it to say it's a bullish engulfing candle. Got a little blue arrow pointing in the up direction. And somebody out there is probably thinking, buy, buy, buy. Well, why would you buy there? Is it confirming a Western technical? Is it confirming support? 
it wasn't in this case. And I went back far, 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 as far as this fund had been in place. It wasn't confirming anything. Wasn't a good opportune time to buy. That's why we don't trade candles, just buy them little loans. Because again, you can see we went up higher and it was all red, boom, and we just kept falling. Now we had a bull sash there. Again, wasn't really a good pattern, relatively small force, but it wasn't confirming a support area. So here we go. So now we've got something else shooting star up here so we so we had a nice forceful bull sash great uh and we did come up and we came up and we broke through both moving averages the 20 and the 50 period moving average shooting star and here's something very interesting people get excited about that and they say yeah, yeah, see candles don't really tell you the whole story and they they're wrong they didn't work this time really well we pulled down the next day and then the next day we we thrust ourselves even higher so now you're thinking you see it doesn't work look at the force in this green candle i should have just bought more well look at the upper shadow of the shooting star and this is what we teach you in our express class alone is that again it's a close above that shooting star would have confirmed that the market was going higher well we didn't do that in fact the next candle we opened higher than the upper shadow but we closed underneath it we closed within that shadow of that shooting star that's negative all within itself time to go short and we came down and we retested this area back here good support in here came back up retested basically a resistance area and we fell some more SDS, check it out because you know the, the market's been falling, falling, falling. If the S and P ever decides to go down, this might actually cross above the moving averages and ch change the way we should be trading. But uh, it's an interesting market, I must say. So yeah, we had we had the bull sash, we had the shooting star. That was a nice confirmation to get out. And you're not going to get in at the very bottom. You're not going to get out at the very top. Again, we had a nice bullish engulfing here, but again, wasn't really confirming a good support area because of course we had the resistance of the moving average right above us. Okay, and I've used it for this market as well. This is the Australian Japanese yen, 240 minute charts. There we go. So the couple of things that I wanted to point out here, in particular, we've got this high point actually on the market here, a nice pivot point we call that. We had an evening star. So I left some of the signals on here from the candle recognition software and I drew a line across. So yeah, you can see the market pulled back and we oscillated and we came right back up into the area. Yes, Brian, I know we went a little bit higher. We didn't go much higher. We didn't have much of a breakout and we started to get the upper shadows and another shooting star and confirmed with a bearish engulfing candle. And that was it. And then we fell down, we got back down underneath the moving averages, and that was it. We kept on going right back down into, again, a pretty nice support area. So get candles, they're giving us great signals. Had we been along this market, we would have been exiting on that shooting star, or, or at least if nothing else, the bearish engulfing candle. Uh, and as I say, we, this green arrow over here to the right again, started to come in, that looks like a hammer again, came into a nice area of decent support. Uh, yes, we're underneath moving averages. We had a little, you could have taken a couple of pips profit out of that if you had wanted and um, enjoyed some profit. That was our main support. We came close to it. Support's an area, resistance is an area. And I love Steve for, he, he, got, he got some of these cartoons made up. And you know, this one really describes how I feel when I'm trading with the candle charts and the candle patterns. And you just crack crack that baseball right out of the park and you knock out the profits. You don't have to buy and hold and go to church and pray and light some candles. You trade the market. We can see when to enter. We can see at good opportune times when to exit. Uh, we know when to take minimal losses so that we don't burn our account away. And um, basically, we know when to let the profits run. So crack your trades with confidence and enjoy your profits. There we are, Ethereum. Now, somebody was asking about uh, cryptocurrencies. Well, here's Ethereum. I didn't want to do Bitcoin. Everybody does Bitcoin, don't they? So take a look at this. This is Ethereum, and it's a 15-minute chart. So again, smaller time frame. I don't know what time frame you want to trade, and that's all right. Whatever you trade works. Let me just see, there we, there we go. You can see we had some decent support in this area. We had a little bit of a, a crack underneath that support line, but again, we were still within the vicinity of that line. And of course, still that 200 period moving average based on the 15 minute chart. But look how many times we hit that support area. Look how we bounced off it and look at the candle patterns that we had. I wanna show you the resistance, change of polarity becomes support. Steve talks about that again in the express class. It's very powerful and very important. So 
hammer. I like to say, you know, remember them? Uh, I think we had a, was there a movie or a program about hammer time? But anyway, nice hammer here. The body is way up here. And again, we didn't close underneath the low of that hammer. We skirted along underneath it. Great opportune places in here to buy again and allow the market to come up. Now, we didn't quite hit the resistance there, but we came back to the moving average, popped up, and we hit our resistance. We hit our target. Enjoy the profits because, look, we thrust all the way back down, did another retest of support. Well, then we had a morning star. And I love, there's probably nothing that I love more than a morning star. But what does that mean? Well, in the morning, when your stars set, your sun rises, we got above the moving averages, we came up, tested your resistance area, retested as support, and then bounced again as support, and we flew in the up direction. The candle patterns, you know, the ones that Steve's identified with the support of the Japanese back in the 80s. They work. They work. You need a strategy. You need to understand what is your strategy, and then you can trade the candle patterns. Even if you're using algorithms, and I have traded algorithms as well, multiple algorithms, the candle patterns actually will give you a better confirmation. I mean, and I'm still saying with, in conjunction with an algorithm, if you wanted to use one, I don't use them anymore because the candle patterns, I can actually identify better trades now without them. Some people who want to try something new, yeah, okay, but the candle patterns are still identifying strong and forceful changes of direction. And that's what it's all about. Multiple entry points in here. And we zoomed. So there we go. What are we going to look at here? Well, look out below. Guess what we're going to highlight right at the very top. And I'm going to say, well, what are we going to look for on here? Uh, and in this whole pattern, again, the market was coming up. We were running out of steam a little bit. The candles were getting small. But we were still heading in the up direction. So happy. We got lower shadow. The bulls are still keeping things propped up. We start to get a doji. Then we get a spinning top with a lot of upper shadow. Very close to a shooting star. Uh, and again, next candle is white, but we didn't close above the upper shadow. Then we get a bearish engulfing candle. Tells me a whole, this is telling me an awful lot. Again, the high is starting to round over here. We get a bearish engulfing, and sure enough, then we start to fall out of bed and we come in the down direction. So this is an exit. Of course, it could be an entry point if you wanted to go short the market. I won't go into all those details of what that means, but uh, if you're familiar with shorting the market, that'd be an opportune time where I'd probably be looking at buying some puts and allow the market to go down, let my puts appreciate in value. Here, here's one of my future markets. Now I've done, again, done it, it's the NASDAQ, done it on a weekly chart, but how are you gonna use that to trade with? Oh my gosh, well, it's amazing what it does do. And here, I'm gonna throw the arrow in there right now and say, hey, look at this, piercing pattern that started to form right at the 200 period moving average. In fact, we had the lower shadow of the hammer we were right at the 20 period moving average. So we weren't far off and I didn't like entering there, so I didn't. And look at the big red candle. We came plowing right down to the 200 period moving average. So now you're gonna go into your time, your trading time frame, which is gonna be much, much less than this. And you're gonna find a better entry point down here. Cause you're saying, well, I'm right at the 200 period moving average. Where is my better entry point? You're gonna find it. As you can see, stochastics was turning up. I mean, even trading on a weekly chart uh, with my options, yeah, you buy. There you go, shooting star. I would have been out here just above the all-time high, uh, and that was uh, only a few months worth of trading. Now, had we been looking, this was this was the whole COVID business here. But look at that again. Market was coming up. We're overextended away from the moving averages. Dark cloud cover. That's one of the powerful candles that I do look for, and that was pretty powerful. Then we had the falling window, and then the market really started to fall. Well, we we had a signal before the market really did too much damage to our portfolio. That was the time to exit or at least take note of where your stop loss is and be prepared for potential moves. And that's what it's all about. And here we go, here's Lee. And, and he said another rave about mycandlecharts.com. It allows him to progress forward at his own pace. And that's what we love, it's all online training, it's instant, as soon as you pay for it, there it is, and you and you can go through it at your own pace, and you can go back and review it and review it as you wish. Uh, so again, selectively moving into different market types as desired uh, and a newly unlimited source of info as the content expands on a daily basis so again he, he's another he's another raving fan about the good stuff that we have here you know, oh hi joe yeah yeah i'll uh, i'll mention that in this next comment here we're going to take a look at gold here so again we're into a commodity it is a futures commodity 
on a five minute chart. So again, yes, I have traded this. Why do I use exponential moving averages? Because I found they work for me. Uh, there are different times when I've used simple moving averages, but I'll pick sometimes different numbers. Instead of a instead of a 10 period exponential, I'll use a nine simple moving average. Yeah, no, sometimes no rhyme. I say no rhyme or reason. Well, there is actually because the lines just seem to fit better with my trading style and strategy. Uh, in case, like, like the 200 period exponential. I mean, look how we hit it here. We came very, very close there and we had a lot of opportune times to go short the market and, and it did, took advantage of that. We got underneath the moving average and we fell down until we hit a morning star again. And those morning stars seem to be everywhere, aren't they? Uh, there we go. There we go. Off the page, way to the left, this was a decent support area. That's why this morning star was even more powerful. Stochastics was turned up. And again, I've got very tight settings on my stochastics of a 335. Um, so again, I liked the area that we came in. Nice morning star we came, but look again, we hit the 20 period moving average. We pulled back, re-entry here with the bull sash. And we continued right up to my ideal target, of the 200 period moving average. I was watching it as we hit the 200. Again, we had the doji and it turned into an evening star and I was glad I was already out. I got out at the 200 period moving average. It was about as perfect as you could ask for. And we came back down to the 20 period moving average. Okay, a good potential support. Now I'm looking for a better entry point. Morning stars, up to an evening star. I mean, that's as, that's as classic as it gets. So there we go. Confident trading with Steve Nissen candle patterns. And what we're talking about today really is about joining the Candle Charts family to learn the true secrets of candles and candle patterns. The, can, the key candle patterns, are that's what's going to make or break the trade. Education is a journey. There's always more you can learn. But why don't you learn uh, the good bits that are really going to help any strategy that you want to employ? and profit today from our tested tool. And, the, and it is, I want to reemphasize that candle patterns, they are a tool for your trading chest. Learn more trading secrets again with our Express and our Advanced Express class uh, and apply strategies that work in all markets and in all time frames. And I, I love testing all these different time frames. The only thing about a one minute chart versus a daily chart is you've got to click a lot faster and you don't really expect to have the same dollar movement, if you will, or even percentage movement. Uh, so again, trade confidently with your new tool to success. That's all candle patterns and candlecharts.com. So the Express class, and we've got an advanced class, of course, uh, and this allows to add to your education. Now the Express class is about um, three and a half hours of education, detailed trade education, plus a quiz, Plus, uh, there's also some downloadable information. Uh, and of course, there's a brief introduction on our webpage. And the Express class contains pertinent information, how to use candles the right way. It's, it's using things the right way that makes all the difference in the world. And there you go. Enjoy your new success. Again, that's what candle charts are all about in the patterns. Picking the right patterns, the ones that suit your market. Um, and, and some candle patterns you're not going to find in the Forex. Because again, the Forex, it's a continuous market. 24 hours a day, five and a half days a week, basically. Uh, but, uh, you know, something like um, the ETFs. Well, if they have a market that's trading, you know, like your currencies overnight or the commodities, you might have more windows. And again, we talk about windows as well. Oops. And there we go. So from our education to your success, you can find us at candlecharts.com and forward slash trade thirsty. And that's, that's our opportunity. So again, we, we've got the, the Express class. Again, it was heavily discounted. Uh, you, can, you can thank our CEO for that, down to $99. It's very, very inexpensive. And as I say, that's over three and a half hours of material plus downloadable inf information uh, and the quiz to make sure that you understand it. And if you don't, go back and relearn the, the module that you missed on. And of course, at checkout, you can get for another discount uh, you can get the Advanced Candlestick Express class. And again, very, very powerful. That's another three hours of information. But look at that. You could be trading with candlesticks and candle patterns by Monday morning. By the time the market's open, you'll be ready to go and you will have that confidence. So I hope that was useful for everybody. That was that was the thrust of uh, our presentation for today. And I see a couple of people didn't have audio, but that must be on their side. Sherry, I think you can still hear me. And Joseph, I hope I answered your question about why I use exponential moving averages. Um, sometimes, yeah, and I even mix simple moving averages with exponential moving averages. But again, that's a Western technical. Why do I do it? Because I'm looking for moving averages that tell me something about 
my particular market and the time frame that we're in. I figure moving average uh, so markets, and you might need to change your moving average, but markets have basically three personalities, uh, the bullish, the bearish, and then the higgledy-piggledy that's going sideways with a lot of volatility. Sometimes your strategies are not going to work, but the candle patterns should be helping you. Now, uh, if you're in a very much sideways market, just beware that uh, you know, you've got to have a nice size box range, if you will, for everything to be working well. But nonetheless, you're still going to see the power of the candles on different time frames, the shadows. And this is what our express class really talks about is, you know, the size and the force of the candle, the shape, you know, which pattern is it? And of course, the shadows, because they're very, very important. Okay, so Mahendra, you've asked here, for the long term, which moving average is recommended? And it's gonna depend upon your market, but okay, I'm gonna start with my 200 period moving average, and I'm finding that it is so darn powerful, it'll blow your mind away. And that's for that's for a much longer time period trading, but it, the market will touch the 200, hopefully. If it doesn't, then maybe you need to adjust that time frame. Uh, but also for a decent medium to long-term period, I'm also looking for the 50 period. And I do use exponentials in that case. Um, I'm finding, again, right now, I'm finding a lot, of, a lot of the markets that I'm trading are really touching on both of these moving averages. Um, but we see great... And here's the thing about the candle patterns. Your longer time frames, you're going to find less candle patterns, which is great. You know, why, why put too many candle patterns on your page? But they're a lot more forceful. And I think we had seen that when we were looking at the, at the charts there. And you could see on some of my weekly charts, uh, and there was a nice piercing pattern. And it just took off from there. And that was it. And, it did, and that, was, that was the NASDAQ. And it just didn't look back. And that happened right at the 200 period moving average. Anybody else with questions? Anybody else out there looking for a little bit more uh, insight into the candle patterns and uh, what we do and uh, what it can do for you, actually? And that's going to be the most important thing is and at candlecharts.com, we always look to help you build your strategy. Candle patterns are the base of everything we do, but you've got to have a good complementary strategy. and You've got to understand it and put it all together. Heiken Ashi, yeah, I don't really, Rajesh, sorry about that. I don't have too many thoughts on Heiken Ashi. And to be honest, I don't use it. And you know what? I have tried Bollinger Bands and I, and I love John Bollinger. I mean, he's, he's done a great job with that. Uh, I have used them in the past. I keep thinking, that's, you've seen my charts. That's as complicated as I get. 20 period moving average exponential, 50, 200. And often I'll have the stochastic, sometimes I don't even bother. Because again, I'm going to see where my support and resistance is, and I can see the candle patterns, and that's going to tell me what I should be doing next. Because again, I'm reading from that, the psychology of the market. Estimated hours of time needed to complete the express class course. Hey, Joseph, yeah. Um, so for the express class, it's about three to three and a half hours. And again, there's some printed material if you want to have a look at that. Uh, and the advanced express is an, is an additional three hours. Uh, so we've compacted a lot of good information in there. Uh, and that's why I say, you know, literally come Monday, you can have all of this candle knowledge under your belt. You'll be ready to go. You'll have the right information from Steve and from uh, candlecharts.com. We put together some great information uh, and of course, you can print out the material, the slides, and you can take a look at it, make your own notes. Um, and, I, and we think that's very good and very good value. Yeah, Rajesh, $99 gets you the express class. And that's what that about. So at the checkout, then you'll see if you want the, the advanced Candlestick Express class, that's an additional $149 for a limited time period. And again, only through this link right now. Uh, so I believe that'll go up after at some point. I don't know when, but uh, yeah, it's, it's very, very valuable information. We continually improve the material and our uh, information that we share with the world. Uh, okay, hey, you know what? We have got one of the most powerful questions here. Uh, and, and you know what? And I've even asked this myself. So this is to Vibor. Um, do you wait for another candle confirmation post engulfing candles? It's going to depend upon where it happens. And that's going to be one of the keys is that you want to have 
confirmation with a candle pattern. But if it's happening at a good support area, thinking of a bullish candle, bullish engulfing pattern, if it happens at a good support area, again, we're going to be looking back in time a little bit. And then we're going to say, right, what well, happened at a good place before? Now I'm confident to take that trade. So I don't wait for another full candle necessarily to close unless it's not in an area of obvious support. So I know that's a bit of a yes and a no answer, but as a general rule, if you can find the major support areas, that's gonna be one of the keys. Um, and then again, you're gonna to want to look for some good forceful candle patterns. Uh, yep. Any thoughts on EMA time and short squeezes? Any correlations? Um, not, not sure, Ted. Uh, you know, literally, I'm just literally trading the patterns along with my Western technicals. And, uh, you know, I go long and short. I trade with the trend as a general rule. I am looking for reversals, though. So, again, I'm looking for very key things, overextension away from the moving averages, especially the 20-period moving average. Uh, but I do look on different time frames for that overextension, you know, and then trade down on my shorter time frame. Yeah, thanks, Vibor. Yeah. Uh, and there we go. Joseph, does the class help you figure out the correct chart time frame? This is going to be partly based upon your, I'm going to say your personality, Joseph, um, but also, you know, what, what time frame did you want to trade on? If you can only come in and trade the market at one point in the day after the market's closed, um, then you're going to want to be looking at the daily candle charts probably more than anything. You'll, you'll look at the longer time frames to get an idea of the trend. Um, but let's say you want to be a day trader, then the information that you're going to start to see and the education is going to help you decide which time frame is going to best suit you. As I say, there's a lot of information there, but it does depend upon um, our own personal personality because again if you're looking at a one minute chart and that's not ridiculous people do trade one and five minute charts um you've got to be quick on the draw you've got to you've got to make your transactions very very quickly what about fibo levels connie love that and i love fibos and yeah we do talk about fibos at candlecharts.com not, not i don't believe in the express class uh, i use them as well uh, not only the fibonacci retracements but also for the fibonacci extensions and quite often i do see very powerful candle patterns right at these opportune levels and it is really really great especially for the 161.8 percent extension sometimes the 261.8 extension um yeah yeah fibonacci's they're really really powerful and let's see what we've got here does the class help you figure out the credit all oh, right there we go i'm just making sure i've got uh, got all my questions i'm not sure if i've answered everybody's question yet well here we go i might see a series of candlesticks along the EMA that gives me the idea how these candles be interpreted correctly. Well, Neil Suwan, hopefully I, I spoke, uh, spoke your name correctly there. Let's say the market is going sideways and you see a bullish engulfing and then you immediately get a red candle. And then you see maybe a hammer and then you get another potential bullish candle. You might, and again, we do talk about this throughout our multiple education programs. We're gonna start to say, well, you might have as part of your strategy that look at, I had a potential entry signal. It's been five candles now, and the market has not done what I expected or anticipated. Therefore, I'm closing out the trade. Yeah, absolutely. There's no guarantees in life. There's no guarantees that the market is going to go up. Uh, personalities change. You know, again, there may be a news announcement that's going to change the way people initially thought about it, uh, and then it can reverse. Yeah. Oh, th yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so yeah, uh, right. So it sounds like we've done a good job on answering that. And um, we look forward to seeing you at candlecharts.com because again, there's a lot more information, but the express class and the advanced express, it's going to give you really what you need to get going. And from that, you know, the, the rest is going to be based upon what you want to do. What is your strategy? Do you, just, do you want to trade like I do? Uh, then again, you're going to want to come and talk to us because again, that's where I do my coaching and educating uh, is at candlecharts.com and, and it's going to help you and we can help you correctly develop your own strategy. And again, it's all your personality and that's what we hope to bring out. Um, so we're not trying to make things up. There is no guaranteed, uh, even algorithms, they are not perfect every time. Uh, and, and even with candle patterns, you may find a good entry position, 
Well, the express class is going to tell you where your stop loss should be. So it doesn't mean you're going to be winning on every trade either, but you're going to be getting out early if the market's going against you. And therefore, you save the majority of your trading capital so that then you can look for the next potential entry point. Isn't that what it's all about? Because we're not going to win every trade. Nobody does. And if they tell you, if you, if they tell you that you can, I'm sorry, you're setting yourself up for failure. Uh, I want to spot the pattern. It's sometimes too late to enter the trade. So Frank says here, Frank's got a good question here. Uh, one of his issues is that when he sees a, a candle pattern, sometimes entering the trade and it's too late and it's already happened. Uh, Frank, again, we're, we would like to show you the difference of our material because literally uh, we set things up the right way so that you can see when you should be entering. Yeah, there's candle patterns going to be all over. I, I only showed a fraction of them. Uh, but literally, again, when we look at the charts, we're going to see where resistance is and where's your risk to reward. If you've got moving averages and you've got, let's say you've got a, a bullish engulfing pattern and you're just underneath the 20 period moving average, you're right. It's probably not a good risky risk to reward trade. It's probably not the time you should be taking that trade because you've got a potential resistance. Now that's how I trade. Everybody's gonna trade a little bit differently, but I'll show you how I trade. Uh, you know, we've got different coaches as well and you can learn from our material and then you'll go click. Now the light comes on and now I understand what I can look for. Sometimes we see a candle pattern and we want to see a retest of that area, like with the hammer. And I showed you, I think was it was at a bull sash where we came back and we retested the area. We didn't close underneath where the stop loss would have been, but we retested the lows and then we took off. And that, and again, that's the power of the candles as well. Not just entering on the candle, but saying, okay, my risk to reward isn't the greatest. Let's wait and see what happens, right? We went up, we hit that little resistance. We pulled back. Now I've got a better potential entry. And then the market lets go and, and takes off to the upside. Frank, I would say, yeah, get on board, give us a call and let's let's talk about uh, some specific examples of the markets you're trading. And let's see where you're, I'm gonna say going wrong, maybe where we're finding a little bit of difficulty and how we can show you how to get to the next step. Um, you, you know, again, using the candle patterns, always we do that, um, but we do have to set our charts up properly and our expectations, which includes the risk to reward portion. Yeah, fantastic. Oh, thanks, Paul. Did the, did the best I could here today. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> thanks, Adnan. Merci beaucoup. And uh, yeah, the green candle and come back later than it drops. Right, so I've gone back in and bought extra on a hammer and recoup my losses. Is this a good strategy? Well, but for sure it is, Phyllis. Uh, and, and that's what we're talking about. And so you see, we go through the candle patterns. That's the first thing. We identify a candle pattern at a good potential location. We look at our risk to reward and we say, well, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to take the position anyway because I just love it. Oh, the market comes back towards my stop loss, but it stops short of the stop loss. I might add in on my position. If you're in options, yeah, I might leg in with some more contracts. I went in with five, maybe I'm gonna add my other 10 now. Now I'm in with 15 contracts and then I'm happy for the move, but I've gotten in and averaged down my cost and I think I'm probably gonna have a higher probability. So for Phyllis, yeah, great opportunity. So just because you see one candle pattern, it doesn't mean you don't wait for maybe a little bit of a retest of that area. Markets love to retest sometimes. Sometimes you know what the market is going to take off and it's going to gallop away and there was no signal. Well, that's just the way it is. We're looking for high probability trade setups. That's what the candle patterns are going to help you with, high probability trade setups. Oh good, Rajesh, we yeah, we, yeah, we'd love to see you there. That's great. And uh, Timothy, demonstration on how the candles work with western technicals. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and Timothy that's what it's about. Find your moving averages that work for your market and your time frame, whatever that may be. And you may need to adjust depending on your time frame or your market. Uh, don't just stick with mine. You know, again, if you, if you think it should be a, a 55 period moving average, well, fine. Then make it a simple moving average. Yeah, check that out. It's an experiment. But again, this is going to be your strategy. It's going to work with your brain. You know, I look at it and say, well, yeah, we might go a little bit underneath the 50 period. But as long as we jump back up within a few candles, I'm happy for that. You might want to see some things a little bit more strict. And again, depending on your market, you may find lines that fit 
very strictly. And when you break that, it always goes down. Okay. You know, that's great. And use the system to your advantage. Yeah, oh, good. Thank, thanks, Adnan. I, yeah, I'm really, really grateful. Yeah. Uh, will we get options candle training for $99 I just purchased? Well, thanks, Phyllis. Many thanks for that. Well, let me tell you, Phyllis, and again, um, you know, I do all the options training at the moment um, at candlecharts.com. If you understand the candle patterns, that's good. That's going to be probably 80% of it. Okay, that's 80% of what you need to learn. Uh, and then the rest is then you go to your options and you say, okay, well, which option do I want to buy? Okay. Give me give me 30 minutes to an hour, and I can show you multiple strategies, and then you can say, well, okay, I like this strategy better. That's I say it's a little bit more advanced. It's just a little bit different material. That's all. The $99 really gets the thrust of information about how to read the candles. Is the market going to go up? Is it going to go down? What's the psychology of the market telling us? Uh, the option, you know, which option you buy. I pretty much buy at or just slightly in the money options, but I have my reasons for that because I like to see the money grow. So I think you know what I'm talking about, Phyllis. I like to have a nice delta. And when the market starts to move in my direction, I want to see my options go up. That's why I buy at or in the money. So there you go. I gave away a little bit extra about the options. <laughs> as I say, and, and, and as Sherry had said in the beginning there, and of course, our Paul, our CEO, he'll say the same thing. Uh, I love options. Options aren't about what they do, it's about what do you want them to do. And all you have to do is marry the right ones together. Uh, but yeah, this is all about candles and understanding what, you know, psych psychologically from this snapshot in time, what does it look like the market is thinking? And again, we're not going to control the market. We're not the city banks. So we want to be trading with the trend. With everybody, all the big money coming in, we want to be trading with them and take advantage of them. <laughs> okay, sure, Rajesh, that does happen, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, you know, l learn how to use candle charts. That'll be with you for the rest of your life, and you are going to look at charts completely differently no matter where you go. Sherry, how are we doing for time? Are you still with us? Huh. Okay. Good. If there's no more questions, uh, I'll say thank you very much for that. And uh, somebody somebody must have come in late there because they said they don't see my charts. This this was our final slide, actually. Um, if you had any other questions while we wait for Sherry to come back, we can always take a look at one. Mahendra, no, we're not allowed to do that. Um, you, you know, again, check check onto our website, candlecharts.com forward slash trade thirsty and, and you'll you'll see us in there. Um, yeah, and I hope that was useful and helpful. You know, we as a trader, this is probably going to be one of the more hard hitting facts we want to consider here. You're not going to be trading every five minutes. You want to find the opportune entries and then you're going to take advantage of it and it's going to make you more money than trading in and out, in and out, in and out every day or every minute of every day. Uh, we're not floor traders. We're not on the New York Stock Exchange. It's, it's the wrong attitude. We don't have that knowledge. We don't have that capability. We're at the end of our computer. The news has already come. We're going to read the candles. We're going to see what the news is telling us or see what the candles are telling us about the news that's just come out and then we can trade that. Yeah, Joseph, actually, Joseph's asking about uh, Bitcoin, and this relates to all cryptocurrencies. I mean, there's no reason why candle patterns and candle charts don't work for that. In fact, they do, because I've, I've done my back testing on that, uh, and there have been some great, great signals. Again, the, you know, Bitcoin is another one. It's like, it's like the other currencies as well. It trades 24 hours a day. If you're only coming in and looking at it on, uh, you know, during one portion of the day, well, there's a lot that's happening throughout the rest of the day. So again, we've got to keep that in mind, candles in context. What candle patterns are we seeing and where are they happening? Bitcoin's been very, very aggressive and it is a very volatile market. So again, we do not want to take away from the fact that uh, Bitcoin itself is renowned and the, and the CME, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, has even stated that it is the most volatile product on the market right now. That may change in one month, two months, three months, we don't know. But right now it is exceptionally volatile. So again, we need to take that into account when we're placing trades. 
which means, yes, you might see a great signal to enter and it may start to go up and then it'll thrust back down. Well, you, you got to watch your stop losses. That's the whole thing about money management. And Steve talks about that as well. The whole trading triad, Western technicals, money management and candle patterns. You've got to have those three. That's what works together, everybody. Right, uh, Vibor wants to buy a book. Um, don't know about the books. Um, to be honest, I do everything online now. So again, li literally, uh, I, I would get into the Express class and then you're going to see the world that opens up in front of you. And of course, we've got the downloadable information. So, so you'll have the slides, Vibor. So I, so I hope that really works for you. Uh, if you Google it again, uh, any one of Steve's, especially his early books, again, it showed the candle patterns. Uh, and I'm telling you, I have tested them on so many different time frames and different markets. If you're going to trade counter trend, don't expect the market to fall completely. So if it's a very, very bullish market and you see a shooting star, initially I'm going to be saying, well, it's going to be pulling back into a potential support, which is where your moving average is. Uh, what is unique or different about Steve Nissen approach to Japanese candlesticks? Well, Steve is the one that brought it to the West. Um, so again, he's, do, he's the one that's done all the research with the Japanese. He's, he created and documented the material. Uh, so I would say, you know, do you want to go to the source of the Japanese candlesticks or are you going to go to people who are maybe modifying slightly, if that makes sense? Yeah, and Frank had asked, how do we find long and short opportunities? Well, using the Nissan Candle Scanner. Uh, th again, that's a different pro that's a different piece of material, but, uh, but it's a piece of software. Uh, will stop losses theory be taught? Absolutely, Phyllis. And again, that's, I'm gonna say that it is one of the most important things. Steve always talks about stop loss. Yes, you enter at a certain point, and, and he, second thing out of, his word, out of his mouth is, and here's where you put your stop loss. As we say, you're not going to win on every trade but you need to know how to limit your risks. Sorry, Angela, yeah, this was just at the end, yeah. And there we go, good. Which technical indicator would work best? Um, the, uh, MR, that, that's a difficult question. Which one works best? Which Western technical works best? It's gonna depend upon yourself. Again, literally, I just use those three moving averages and stochastics. And the candle scanner, that's what I use. And again, you've got to keep modern. You've got to keep upgrading your, your software. We were talking about upgrading software the other day. And that's what happens when you get a little bit of education. And you've got to keep fresh with the material. Yeah, money management is key, absolutely. And it's going to help you to make more and more and more. Learning when to stay in the trade as opposed to when we just want to jump out. And what moving averages do I use again? Yes, Rajesh, yeah. So I'm using the, in particular, the 20 period exponential moving average for my short term. And I wanna know if the market's closing above or below the moving average. And of course, I'm looking at the colors, I'm looking at the force, I'm looking at the shadows. Very, very important. So yeah, exponential moving average. Yeah, so 20, 50, and 200, those, those are gonna be the most important and powerful ones for me. Uh, and sometimes on my charts, I'll throw in the 10 period moving average, but right now I'm sort of going back to a little bit, a little bit more basic and just taking out the 10 and cleaning up the slides. So there we go. Sherry's actually posted in the question in the, in the chat box there, uh, the link to candlecharts.com forward slash trade thirsty. Uh, and of course the special link that we've got there to get the express class at $99. Uh, again, that's usually much, much more. $295 is what we normally sell that for. And there's a lot more value within it as well. So again, I'm gonna say the express class is an absolute must. Yeah, and I do use stochastics, 335. I keep them super tight. 82155 Fibonacci numbers. Yeah, I use, I use the main Fibonacci numbers, of course. The, you know, the uh, 38.2, 50, 61.8, and then, of course, the extensions. 161.8 is very powerful for me, but I know how to use Fibonacci. Um, yeah, moving averages, 82155, not bad. I mean, that's close enough. And again, as long as understand how your charts are working with your moving averages. That's what makes the difference. So I might say I use a 10 and a 20 and you say eight and 21, great. As long as, as, long as you're able to read it and you can see the differences. Okay, I th yeah, that both euros should work, but uh, thanks Sherry for that. 
Uh, yeah, so Rajesh, I think I think we've got your question answered there, don't we? Uh, is there a way to see the question chat posted in here? Don't know. We'll leave that to someone else to answer. Uh, I may have missed it, but do you need to use indicators in order to take full advantage of candlestick patterns? T, 100% yes. That's what we teach you in the express class. You cannot trade candle patterns just by themselves. You must have some other Western technical, whatever that may be. Support and resistance is going to be very, very important for you. I mean, that's key and critical, I would say, in any way of trading. The other thing is, is yeah, you may want a couple of moving averages. Uh, let's just see what else we got here. Oh, Phyllis, there you go, Phyllis, you're back again. Slow or fast stochastics? Yeah, what's the difference? Yeah, okay, I, I have two lines on my stochastics. There's a fast line and a slow line, a K and a D. Uh, so of course, what I'm doing there is I'm setting them for a three, three, five, and I think the five was the smoothing side of it. I want a really sharp, but again, I will adjust that dependent upon how the market is acting. Sometimes it needs to be adjusted. Start with the basic numbers when you install something like your stochastics and then adjust it up and watch it and see how it acts and reacts based upon those key and critical market change of directions because again stochastics are only good for entries they're not really the greatest for exits oh man brian that is that was just something else today and can you remind us how everybody can get a hold of you so that they can i see still see some questions coming in that's fantastic but it is 10 o'clock, mm -hmm. and I do need to uh, move on to our next speaker. And sorry for that, show. Hopefully I didn't take up anybody's hey. time there. No. I would say come to our website because, again, we've got a chat box at the bottom and at candlecharts.com. And, of course, we've got the forward slash uh, trade thirsty. And, again, there should be the, the, um, um, the customer support there. So, again, just type in your questions there. Find out how to get cool. in touch with us, and we'll get your questions answered. We do our best. Oh, that's fantastic. All right. Thank you so much.